When we talk about migration, we generally mean international migration, and Australia is a country of migrants, international migrants. More than a quarter of the Australian population were born overseas. Um, more than around half of the Australian population have at least one parent born overseas. I'm a migrant of sorts. I mean, my parents, I, I was born in Australia, but my parents came to this country from England in the 1950s. Anywhere in the world, people prefer their own kind. That doesn't matter whether you're in India or Africa, wherever. When all things are said and done, on balance, people prefer to live with their own kind. There is a cohesiveness when you share cultural background, language, religion, geography. They have family out here. My mum had a sister and a brother that lived in Sydney and they communicated often, of course then by mail. And they, my mum had bronchitis and my aunt told her, plus the doctor told her, it would be more beneficial for her to come and live in Sydney with the warmer climate. So we emigrated over, came over by boat six weeks on a boat. So we arrived at Sydney Harbour and my aunt and my uncle met us at the harbour and we've lived here ever since. So my parents, um, before they arrived in Australia, they were actually sponsored by my uncle because there was a civil war going on um, around East Africa. And um, so they just, they wanted to completely get away from the war and go to a place where they felt more safe so I guess anything that was better than war at the time they would be happy with. I moved from Adelaide to Melbourne because I wanted to work in the media and as a journalist particularly with the ABC and there weren't many jobs in that field in Adelaide so I came to Melbourne. Uh, I've stayed in Melbourne because I met my partner here, my wife of, of nearly 30 years now so another reason people migrate or stay in a place is because they fall in love, they form relationships. When you see the light start burn out in the sky And every river, every ocean is empty and dry So, for example, in the case of Australia, they bring skills. Uh, migrants are generally young, they, they help uh, lower our, our general age of the population that makes us a more productive society. Migrants pay taxes and contribute um, to the wealth of the society, to government revenue, usually without drawing on uh, government services. Often they can't draw on government services, at least not until they've been in Australia for a long time. So first thing is to recognise that migrants are delivering all sorts of shared benefits, benefits that we all share in. There's lots of variety of cultures around and the migrants around and um, I think it's added a lot of different flavour in the city. Shopping has changed, the food culture has changed and I think that's just added a lot of colour and um, variety to our living and appreciation of other cultures as well. And so we have this beautiful multicultural situation of so many things from so many places coming in and it's why our city is like no other and we might have Asian students, we might have African refugees, we might have post-war Italian, Greek, Macedonian migrants and they're all in this together and they're all here for so many different reasons to begin with. 
but this is their city. This is a global city. Each of them has brought something. Each of them has learned something. Each of them had an influence on the city and the city's had an influence on them. Australians are in danger of losing their identity simply because of the numbers with which they are diluted. So many people coming from China, so many people coming from India, so fast. It's difficult for a lot of Australians to actually comprehend.